welcome to the MBS show, episode number 221. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Will. Will? Did we lost Will? Sorry, I'm completely blanking. What? What are we doing again? Oh, we're streaming! Right, that's the thing that we're doing. Sorry, it's just been so long, I kind of forgot we had the ability to do that. <laughs> I... Yes. <laughs> well, for my part, I was on vacation and I did tell everyone... On your part, you're just working, dude. Yeah, I know. What is with that? Work and vacation. Oh, jeez. Those are things. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, but anyway, also joining us is Lurker Cat. Hey, guys. Back again. Hello. How are you doing with the whole thing? Because we well, with two weeks haven't recorded or something like that? Yeah. I was on holiday, too, and I'm pretty good. Oh, yeah. Like, you were on vacation, and then I was on vacation, and then, like... I came back from vacation, you too, and I'm recording, Will's here, it's like, yay, we're recording! <laughs> the boys are back in town, the boys are back in town, down, down. <laughs> So there's a lot to catch up in terms of what we have been doing. So, uh, Will, since you haven't been around, what have you been doing, man? That implies I've actually been doing, being productive and being a member of society. <laughs> you that, can that's lie and say you Totally say you were. No one will question it. I've been concentrating on work and building up a very sizable stash of money to do things with it. All right. Yay! Money is always good. But have you heard of this new game on the phone? It's called Pocket Monster Go. Have you heard of it? No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> it's not like I, it's not it's not like I'm already level twenty, the max level of the ah! entire thing. It's not it's not it's not like I've. It's not like I've spent a daily 10 kilometer walk <laughs> to uh, hatch, hatch stuff. And it's not like I am thoroughly destroying gyms in my area, even though I'm like the only blue I'm Team jealous. Instinct represent. But <coughs> Team Instinct. Yeah, sure. Go on, be a bunch <laughs> of gold babies. What are you going to do? <laughs> Meanwhile, my entire town is taken over by Team Valor. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> My little village with the poor sweet G, and I can't go out and beat them because it's like you have no internet connectivity. Like server drops. It's like why? Actually, the cool thing I just learned is that T-Mobile is actually going to be offering unlimited data with the Pokemon Go application. Oh. Yep. Starting next Tuesday. That's a good excuse to switch. <laughs> yeah, That's I mean. Yeah, I mean, incentives. I mean, never have to worry about data limits or anything with them. But we're getting off track. I apologize it's for that. It's cool. It's cool. So wait, um, there's Team Valor, Team Instinct, and what's the other one? Mystic. Mystic. So Mystic's Mystic. blue, right? Yeah, yeah, Mystic's blue. How it is, uh, really, there's no difference. Between, there's no difference between the teams except none. for, like, what their uh, color is and what their um, charter is, like what they represent. Valor represents strength. Uh, Instinct represents... Uh, Eggs, nurture. Trusting. Yeah. Yeah, like nurturing or something. And Mystic represents the brains of the operation, being the only ones who know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, kind of like, I don't know if this thing's gonna work, but I trust it. Let's just throw our lot in anyway, even if it's gonna be a bad battle. Whee! You know something interesting here? I don't have it yet. I, I had a chance to play it, but I didn't because I don't want to mess up my, um, iOS account, so I didn't. But, uh, I'm on Team Red. <laughs> oh man, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just say this. I have met, I have met more people than I ever thought. I mean, there's everyone from people way older than me to, you know, kids. I mean, Pokemon has literally become a national phenomenon in America, and again. it is just again. But it is amazing how much it actually breeds a sense of community. I mean, people just coming together into one thing, and I mean, just. The amount of activity some people are getting, like some are just using it as an excuse to exercise, others are using it as a way to meet with others, and quite honestly, it changes a lot of ways people interact with things. It's like, I mean, heck, go go look up a show called Loading Ready Run. They created a perfect skit representing what life was like before Pokemon <laughs> Go and what life was after Pokemon Go, <laughs> in- including one small part where it's like, what do you what do you do when you want to go out for a late night uh, get together with your friends? Before, hey man, want to come out and get some drinks at a Seven Eleven? It's like, nah, I'm not up for that. After Pokemon Go, dude, there's a Snorlax in the park. <laughs> really? 
Oh, legit, sleep. I actually caught a snorlax like today. I'm so chuffed. Oh, God. Oh, wow. But, yeah, like, like you mentioned, the whole Pokemon thing, it's, it's kind of an excuse for people to gather around. And it, it's just really an awesome app that, um, I, I forgot the company that built the game, but it's really awesome. It's a Pokemon company, I believe. No, no, no. It's part of it. It starts with an N. It's, uh, they, Niantic. Niantic, yeah, they, they also created Ingress. It was kind of a Google Map kind of deal. It was way back when. But if you're not Team Instinct, well, Valor, Instinct, and Mystic, if you're not all those three, you could always be in Team Rocket. Yeah, go go around wearing a giant red red R shirt and steal people's smartphones. <laughs> See, I would do that. It's like, there's a Pikachu on that, that's fine. I would even recite the entire, like, first thing. Uh, Dress my cat up as a meow. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Hell, you know what? I'd actually love to do that. Just get, 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 uh, because I'm catching so many Radita Ekans and coughing. I have a coughing just... and Ekans. Let's do no, this, no, Will. No, no, Let's team up. No, no. Yeah, yeah, no. I wear a red R shirt and a hat and everything, rocket grunt, and... <laughs> I basically, if they ever do PvP battles, just be like, ah, darn kids, getting in my way, and just always lose, especially when they're younger, and be like, damn, blasted kids, oh, the boss is gonna hate me for this, and then just run away. See, I just wanna wait right in the corner, there's a bunch of kids going, what? Who's still out? Prepare for trouble! Make it double. <laughs> just start. To which, then, to, to which then you better be preparing for trouble if you're gonna jump out at a bunch of kids around a corner. Hello? Woo! In the middle of the What's night. going on here, miss? You kids are out past your bedtime. Oh my! Be you have a terrible fate, haven't you? Claire, you're not like, helping your case here. The police officer no. is staring at you. I was, I would just cite my thing till the end, and they're like, you're, "You gotta get back in the car." I was like, "I did it. I have no regrets." Oh god! Oh. I think we broke Norman. Uh, yeah, it's the general <laughs> idea of just oh, smooth you skin. You got broken so easy. <laughs> Uh, the general idea of you guys just being nuts is just much fun. <laughs> but Lurk, what about you? We haven't asked you how you've been doing. Lurk is fine. Lurk is good. Lurk caught Snarlax. Lurk is happy. <laughs> and how was your vacation, by the way? Oh, vacation was good. I got burnt to a crisp. <laughs> but it was okay. I survived. I want a drain, but <coughs> the rain gods only answered accordingly in Scotland and not actually in Crete. <laughs> so hey. everyone got rain and I got burnt. <laughs> Hey, Scotland, yeah, we got something in common then, because that's actually thanks to Pokemon Go, I got something I haven't gotten in ages. Sunburn. And being, comple- <laughs> yeah. and be- and being completely Irish, we don't tan. Oh, God. Period. You burn, you burn. I yes, know that burn. feels you, I know that feels you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I went we can burn, we can burn together. We can burn together, <laughs> Lurker. I'm glad I got burned. Oh, All wow. the things I learned for the are still alive. <laughs> And as for me, I, well, I, like I mentioned before on the previous episodes, um, I was in Australia, Perth to be exact. Um, Represent. Yep. Met family members, went out with friends, and here's a shout out to Epsilon. Here's to you. Thank you for meeting me there and bringing me around and driving in your car. I thought you didn't get stung by a spider. Oh, no, no, no. Something else that's deadly well, out there. When we have him on, we'll tell you the greatest evil battle. It'll, it'll just, it's, it'll be amazing, man. Like, it'll be amazing. You've hyped up now, Norman. You have to deliver. Yeah, I mean, I can do it justice. It's like, wow. <laughs> just, we, we need to be, he needs to be on and tell the story. It's like, really awesome. But, um, besides that, there's a whole world of, wow. I mean, for you guys, Locally, you guys have the EB Games, GameStops, and whatever it is that you have for gaming purchases and whatnot. And um, what I do know is that most of those stores, like those game stores, have a pop culture section where you can buy Funko Pop vinyls and T-shirts and whatnot. And I like that section more. Like, honestly, I don't care about the games because I don't play them. So I'm just at one corner there looking at the Funko Pop figures and deciding, hmm, what can I buy? Hmm, what can I buy? Oh, yeah. Oh, I knew he was a fake gamer guy. Hey. If He's you... like, look at him with that controller. I bet he doesn't even play games. I bet he doesn't even know that that's an Xbox. I do yeah. know the games. Yeah. It's just that since you have Steam... And, well, why 
buy any other well I, I do have two consoles so yeah but uh, only reason why I don't buy games <laughs> over there is just because of region locking so yeah like, they don't really do that with guys do they it's like it's a fake gamer guy uh, true you have to prove yourself Norman <laughs> I have never encountered that, to be honest. I, I no, mean, I have never encountered. I know I've never encountered anyone who said that. I mean, when 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 people said fake that. gamer, when someone said like fake gamer girl, I'm thinking what like some of those nude models that like wear controllers over themselves or yeah, something. Yeah, like, I remember when I used to play WoW, people were like, "Oh, I bet you don't actually play games." And man, like, "Oh, what game system did you play with at first? I'm like, "Oh, did you hear this game? This game? If you've not heard of this game or played this game, then you're not a true gamer." What the? I've had that's, that before. That's stupid. Yeah, it I mean, is if you play, if you play, stupid. if you play games, you're a gamer. If you, it's like saying no one's a true. Trekkie, unless you've watched all the series, and it's like kind of. No. If you put it that way, right? Like for a Trekkie, yes. If you're a true, true Trekkie, yes, you watch all of them, even the bad movies. But if you're no, uh, no, I'm not gonna watch Search for Spock. Dang it! Well, if, <laughs> if you're a true one, you have to appreciate and dislike everything. And if you're just a casual Trekkie, you'll watch the one you like. I mean, I'm not saying that you're casual or not. It's just that mentality of mindset is there. Even with the Brony fandom, if you can name every episode, writers and whatnot by heart, then yes, you you are top tier. Whatever, I just consider everyone, if you like something mm. and you like like it, you're a fan of it. That's yeah. that's all it is. That's a blanket uh, statement there. But yes, it's true. You don't really have to segment everything into, oh, I like Pokemon. That means you like everything? No, I just only like no. the original, red, blue, and green. Those yeah, ones. I mean, there's still, there's, still, there's, still, there's still a Pokemon fan. That's still all of this. But whatever, that compartmentalization. Wow, we are getting really off track here. We got a bunch of things, <laughs> don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but still, I miss you guys. And bantering is fun. Plus, I don't know. I mean, uh, Australia was really nice. One thing I need to end this is like, I can't handle the coal. Like, I, no, coal and me don't do well. Give me like tropical to... weather. I, I, I'm good with that. Oh, jeez, Norman, they never come here. Well, I can, I, I can. Just need some um, long johns, jackets, and whatnot. Jeez. I mean, like, just... It's only six degrees. It wasn't that cold. I, no, well, it went to under four and negative zero at night. I suppose. At night, yeah. yeah so cool. I was sleeping in the cold with no heater in the room. You you can just imagine Wait, are we that. talking... We're talking Celsius, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, Celsius, sorry, yeah. We're talking, the, we're talking the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah. sorry yeah. about that. America's stupid. Anyway, um, but no, no, man. Uh, okay. Now, Minnesota in the winter, we get around negative, negative 15 temperatures yeah. on average, and then it goes down to negative 25 in wind chill. I think the worst we've had is like negative 30 mm. in Celsius wind chill. But that was like, that was that, that, that's like the record worst. You guys deal winter well because I know I can't. And of course, keep in mind, I don't know metric, so uh, I could be completely wrong. Uh, yeah, probably. I don't know. But still, uh, there's my adventure through Australia and stuff. It's cold. That's all I have to say. Uh, it's cold, and you survived all the beasties. Oh, so, yeah, yay! The emus, the, those emus. And kangaroos. I, I, I dealt with kangaroos. I even tamed one. <laughs> you tamed a kangaroo? <laughs> yes. Use it to fight your enemies. <laughs> no, I, I set them free. They're, they're all over no, now. Norman! No. No, I said they're free in town. Me. Norman, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get a kangaroo friend, which will lead you to a mesa, and you climb that mesa and rescue a gigantic golden eagle and save it. You go on an awesome animated flying <laughs> adventure. Yes. And red pals or moss buddies. Yeah, yeah. Then you have then you get kidnapped by like basically crocodile Dundee's <laughs> coke addicted brother. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, let's head into news. Oh, God. So, from one part of the world to the other, uh, San Diego, you guys know where that is, right? Yes. No, no, San Diego. America! It's a place. It's a place in California. Uh, California. I think so. I, I don't really remember because I, the uh -huh. I always confuse California and Florida. Well... Oh. I do know San Diego is the one place Rainbow Dash can go to be herself. <laughs> uh, yes. But talking about San Diego, right? Like San Diego Comic Con. 
it's there. It's one of the places where a lot of nerds are going to be at. Yay, nerds! Like people. It is the largest convention in America, second none to BlizzCon, probably. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Was it QuickCon? No, QuickCon's not that big anymore. To my knowledge, uh, the San Diego Comic Con and BlizzCon are the two big ones in America. Mm. The the two biggest conventions, followed by like PAX or something, or PAX or E3. Mm, but E3 is kind of a private deal, right? Yeah, it's. Well, I'm not sure now. Mm. I haven't paid attention. I mean, I don't even pay attention to the E3 anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. But, uh, uh yeah, Comic Con. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, on to Comic Con. Uh, you know how most of these developers, publishers, and whatnot like to do their exclusive items. Like, um, last year we had an exclusive, uh, vinyl pony kind of thing for San Diego Comic Con and Transformers. Oh, yeah, the, the see through sparkly one. Mm-hmm. And Transformers had their thing, and um, a lot of products do, like San Diego Comic Con exclusive, much the wows. And apparently this year, IDW has their very comic cover for issue 44. And this is truly outrageous. It's Gem. Yes. And it's a better it's a better send-up to Gem than the Gem movie, Gem movie was. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It looks good. I, I like how... The artist for this one, um, I've, mm, I, I'm not 100 percent sure who did this. I should have uh, done more research on it, but still, this is a really good cover. Um, so the cover artist is Sarah Richard. Sarah Richard, all right, cool. And um, there was a sh- gem shirt done by Nanook, uh, Nanook something. Um, I forgot the name. She was a guest on the show. She did this. Similar art, like gem and the uh, hologram pony style, and um, she called it Twi and Rainbooms, which was really cool. And I have the shirt. Nice, <laughs> really good. So, if you're going to San Diego Comic Con, it'll be at the IDW booth. So go buy. Like if you have a chance, this this is fun. Like I do like this one. It's very nice. It's very pretty. Wow, I just like how Twilight and. Rainbow Dash R and it. Applejack too. Like, oh god, is that? Fluttershy is small. I'm not happy with. This. She's the smallest of them all. It's like, no, she needs to be the biggest. <laughs> and I like Celestia. Celestia looks good. Like, um, Celestia uh, looks good for a change. Yeah. What What is the robot's name? I forgot. Ah, uh, by the way, um, Synergy. Yeah, Synergy. Well, you remember, eh? I may or may not have watched the cartoon in my childhood. I I'm not judging. I watched it too, but I just forget a lot. The booth that you can get this comics are at booth 2743 for 5 bucks. They only have 250 copies. So yeah, first come first serve. I hope you guys get this because whew, this is going pretty fast. So comic books are fun and all, but what about them audio books? Audio books, great. Last thing I need is a book telling me to read it some more. And probably judge me. Someone reads it for you, so you don't have to read, and they just look at you silently like you lazy person. You have to have someone else reading it for you. Speaking from personal experience, audiobooks are fun. Like, especially if you purchase the audiobook Penny Royal Academy written by Emmy Larson, available on Audible, audible audible.com. Oh, that good old plug. (laughs) Yes. Uh, So anyway, um, Audiobooks, in my personal experience, are really fun because the person who's reading to you gets into it. They describe all the backgrounds, and it's really fun. Well, as long as it isn't read by Gilbert Godfrey, I think we're fine. <laughs> oh, no, I remember that video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Twilight Sparkle was going to visit Celestia. Oh, God. I would actually listen to that. That's a sad thing. I'm like, yes! Yeah. It keep me awake. Because audiobooks normally just put me to sleep, and then I miss like majority of the because I fell asleep through the entire thing, and it's like, oh no, not again. <laughs> yeah, but still, um, talking about Gilbert <laughs> Godfrey, and, and the, the Gilbert has nothing to do with this, but Twilight does, and apparently Hatchet are going to do the audiobooks for the My Little Pony books, like those novels written by GM Barrow. Cool. Yeah, they're gonna got got one for both Twilight Sparkle and the Crystal Heart Spell, and Twilight Sparkle and the Forgotten Books of Autumn. Hmm. Maybe they'll start doing the. I don't know if they have, but maybe they'll do them also for like the 
Journal of the Two Sisters and the other ones too. Mm. That'd be that'd be interesting. Yeah, we'll see. And yeah. if you do subscribe to Audible, the first month is always free, and you can get a free audiobook. So if you don't want to pay fourteen ninety eight, you can get your first trial book for free. And once you subscribe, you get your free book. That book is yours permanently. So yay. Uh, this is fun if you can get it on Audible. If not, I'm sorry for s- not really promoting it well. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's on uh, Amazon uh, currently. Mm. It may be on Audible eventually. Probably, yeah, because they want the monies. It's Amazon. They always want to make money. Oh, true. Like any, uh, like any other marketing person or store, they they want their monies. Name of the game? Nope. Yeah, but still, from one audio recording to another, it looks like the My Little Pony movie is currently underway with audio. Like right now, they're doing their choir recording. So yay, this is going to be fun. So I thought that movie was kind of near its end, but no, they're still working on it. Well, if they got a 2017 uh, release, I mean... They're probably going to be finishing up audio sometime before, mm, I don't know, probably before September. They'll try and finish all the audio, and then it's just a whole bunch of animating catch-up and whatnot. Depends when they're releasing. Did they say when, what uh, quarter they were going to be releasing? October, 2017? somewhere around October. Okay, so they still got a... Yeah, they, they, still got, they still got a good amount of time, but... Um, yeah, those anim- um those animators are gonna have a lot of work cut out for them. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Because they're gonna be locked in their studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, this uh, the choir recording though. I wonder what kind of songs we're gonna be expecting. Are we gonna be getting a bit of? I mean, with when it, when I think choir, I'm just thinking, oh great, is one of the songs gonna be like some sort of gospel song? <laughs> that would be amazing. We'll see. The... I would love that. I would just be like, yeah. You you'd be surprised. Ah, da, 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 da. It works for Hercules. It can work for ponies. <laughs> You'll be surprised. Like literally, um, most of the songs from the My Little Pony. Um, TV series have a bit of choir in the background, like mostly um, backup singers and whatnot. So they're there. It's not that they're Actually, not. Actually, uh, I, I I will eat. I will eat my own hat or some representation of my hat if they do a redo of because we already know it involves sea ponies in the mm, upcoming uh, movie. Shooby do. If they do a redo of that of Shooby Doo, if they do, here come the sea ponies in some new modernized way. I will, I will eat my hat. Or you have to at least I draw will... you eating your hat. And <laughs> I, I, will, I will do something fantastical. All right, I'm not. I'm not. Heck, someone leave a comment. Say what fantastical thing you think I should do if they do that thing? Because I would flip. I would flip if they did that. I I, I would want that too. Just because of that song's pretty nice. I wonder why people cringe at it, but it's not a bad song. Silly, but not bad. If they just even uh, do a nod in the movie to it, like heck, it's like the, their character's like, "Yeah, I know how to communicate, sea pony, shoo be doo," and the, <laughs> the, one, of the, one of the sea ponies slaps and is like, "Hey, we do not say those words around children." <laughs> oh, I, I would, I would look at Pinkie Pie first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but still, that'll be fun. Oh, I do hope uh, that. I do hope that. And talking about, well, um, getting things done. Apparently, uh, we get a new guest star for the up and coming episodes. Yay! Yep. Do you guys know uh, Patton Oswalt? Yeah, he's a big guy. He's got big shoes to fill. He's got a great sense of comedy. Yeah, he's a mostly a comedian. Um, what does he usually do? I, I don't really remember. Was it? I know he was in King of Queens. Dang it! You know what? I am completely blanking on what Pat Oswalt is. Uh, you know what this calls for? What? Google. <laughs> yep. Uh, IMDb. Google, Google will never judge you and all the questions you ask. Okay, Pat Oswalt, stand-up comedian, most well known for Spencer Ulch in the sitcom King of Queens. And played multiple identical brothers and agents of Shield. He voiced Remy in Ratatouille. Oh, and... I never realized that. Let's see here. Oh wow, he's been in Blade Trinity, mm. Taxi, Twenty Two Jump Street, oh. Space Cop, mm. Keeping Up with the Joneses. You see, he's got a he's got a bit of everything. Oh, he was in Rick and Morty as Beta Seven. <laughs> yeah, the upcoming character he's going to be playing. 
is called Quibble Pants. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by the name, it's going to be My Little Pony, ain't it? <laughs> uh, it's just going to be interesting. Uh, plus the whole the whole uh, subject of the next uh, episode that we're going to be coming into is all about uh, Daring Do and uh, like a Daring Do convention. Yep. Oh. Which gets into the whole thing of like, what is the deal with, okay, we already know Daring Do is real, but does no one else know Daring Do is real? Does everyone else think she's fictional? I think the way that it works here is only a few selected people know that Daring Do is real. So for Rainbow Dash to look at or to discover that Aki Erling is actually Daring Do blows her mind and it is pretty awesome. Yeah, but then you have to really think about it. It's like, okay, they have conventions for Daring Do. What's to stop one of the bad guys from... What's to stop Alan Zodal from just showing up and being like, yeah, you're worshipping the person who hit, makes my day horrible. I'm killing all of you. <laughs> That'd be an awesome idea. I like this idea. Hmm? And here's the thing. Um, we get to see the character, and he looks pretty cool. And he is an Earth Pony, judging by the picture here. He is an Earth Pony. Yay for Earth Pony. Yeah. And he has wings like, oh man, I can't wait to see the in-depthness of how this works because you're playing, you're, you're cosplaying as a Pegasi, like, how? Mind blown. Cosplaying yeah, ponies yeah. for the win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ponies cosplaying. I mean, we got that from the, um, best friends forever with, uh, Twilight and Cadence when, uh, little fillies, uh, wear outfits of each different princess. So it's like, yeah. um, so it's like, uh, ponies do idolize their <laughs> Hugh. characters. So it's just, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. And, and cute. It yeah, it's nice just to see the yeah, I, I can't wait to see the background ponies more because usually if you remember the Halloween episodes, those are the fun ones because we get to see ponies dressed up in really, really crazy costumes that are inspired by our world. Uh, remember the, what should you call it? Still that? say Mr. and Mrs. Cake as Raggedy Ann and Andy yeah. is just perfect. Yeah, but ain't those two characters actually brothers and sisters? Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're not even gonna. <laughs> All right. We're not going down the Game of Thrones route, Norman. No. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's... Game of Thrones? What? <coughs> wrong direction, Norman. Wrong, wrong. Oh. Uh, I'm just shame. stating out Show the for families. <laughs> yeah. And speaking about it being a show for families, one of the other episodes that's coming up is apparently about a change league of the Crystal Empire. Oh no. Ooh. Are you for real yeah. now? Because I don't listen to spoilers. Ah. No, no, seriously, that is, that is what the release synopsis is. Oh god, no. There's a, they're, they're worried that there's a changeling spy. There's a scare it's in the Crystal like Empire some, of a changeling sort of spy. Tiny little- Changeling flying over the Crystal Empire at one point in one of the episodes. Mm, I can't remember. It was in the that was the first one. Mm-hmm. It was in the premiere. It was in the. It was like in the fade out. Yeah. So. Oh, so yeah, yeah we, we got all that. I want your little baby. <laughs> <laughs> I would not be sad if that baby was still in, but that's just hey. <laughs> be nice. I am being nice. And talking, kind of. <laughs> and talking about being nice. <laughs> Uh, Hasbro acquires animation studio, Boulder Media. Hey, <laughs> a buyout. Oof, dang, fun. But anyway, um, Hasbro recently bought an animation company, and said animation company is called Boulder, Boulder. Media. Yes, and Mod is a static, of course. Mm, yes, indeed. Boulder. <laughs> yes. And um, said company did. Animations for Wonder Over Yonder and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, to name a few. And I like cheese. <laughs> I like cheese, cheese, cheese. <laughs> anyway, um, according to Hasbro CEO Brian uh, Goldner, with Boulder we will deliver the highest quality animation that will engage our audience with depth storytelling, deep sorry, story. deep storytelling, and great character. In a very cost-efficient manner. No, I'm sorry, but I actually kind of like the idea of Depp storytelling, of Johnny Depp storytelling. It's like, yeah, and and like the guys, and uh, let me just get my friend Tim Burton. <laughs> it's all the arm waving and everything. And <laughs> <laughs> Although I am imagining this entire paragraph getting read by Maud. Mm. In Maud's monotone voice was bolder. We will deliver the highest quality animation that will engage our audiences with cheap storytelling and great characters in a very cost-efficient manner. 
<laughs> yeah. And according to Chief Content Officer Stephen David, as one of the large independent studio producing animation in Hollywood, the time is right for Hasbro to acquire its own animation studio, allowing us to expand our animation and storytelling capabilities even further. So, yeah, I, I guess this is a positive for Hasbro. Yay! Yay! Uh, now they just gotta now they just gotta finish hiring on Craig McCracken for one of their things, and we'll really see this take off. <laughs> but but I doubt I doubt I doubt Craig will actually do any pre-existing property. Well, I, I don't know. The guy seems very heavily geared towards original content, mm-hmm. which is good because some artists want their OCs, and I'm not saying yeah, original yeah. character. I'm just saying original content. Yay! Yeah, yeah, totally. And of course, Wander Over Yonder is ending. Mm, yeah. So. There's your sad news for the day. Yeah. Hey, but still, wah, wah, wah. It, this is this is also a positive because with them buying this out, they have well more time to do more animations. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe less hiatus and more content in the future. We'll see. Well, uh, D- DH, uh, DHX Studios is the one that handles the uh, My Little Pony animation. Mm-hmm. But still, so- if they decide to not use them anymore and use their own company animation studio who knows i hope not because dhs has been doing this for a while now yeah dhx has a a rapport and experience they've i mean if you compare the backgrounds to the first season to the backgrounds now to also how character models move these people know this show now they 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 are in their stride they know how to animate this show they have time to just throw in whatever, practically. Are they And the mistakes here are not so obvious as the one in Season 1. Remember Cyclops Pony? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, but now uh, I must see it. Yeah, you, you'll see. It, it's a quick glimpse. And like It was just too so freaky. Um, there was a YouTube guy that pointed out all those things. And, oh boy, the, the people at DHX did not like that. <laughs> and it's not because of um, copyright and stuff. No, it's just that they didn't like that to be pointed. But still, they try harder and they got better. So that's what I appreciate about these guys. Yeah, they can't be sloppy now and just fire it out. Because I was like, oh no, the internet is spotting all of our corners that we cut. <laughs> no! Uh, Damn you, bronies! Yeah, this is also true. And um, with that, we are done with news. It's a lot. I hope that you guys at home don't mind the volume of news this time around. And, well, let's move on to the next topic. And said topic is letter time, letter time. (coughs) And if you want to get your letters read on show, you can always send it to the MBS show at gmail.com. That's the MBS show at gmail.com. And, well, one of us will read your emails. And coming here from CRC Brony, question for Will. Um, dear Will, I think you're an awesome guy. And that Norman and Ellipses, the others, are lucky to have someone on the show to bring it to life. It's been fun listening to you. So therefore, I have some questions for you. And uh, he has a lot here, so I'm going to save it for, well, probably a few weeks, who knows? We'll milk this because Lurk has questions too. So, um, number one. <laughs> so many questions. <laughs> yes, indeed. All of the questions. <laughs> so, question number one is, I overheard something on the show about you having 14 years of choir experience. Is that statement legit? If yes, I might send the show some videos of the choir I'm in. Oh, wow. That's cool. So is this legit? Yeah, yeah. Um, basically started literally in kindergarten at a private Catholic school. Mm-hmm. And since then, every single year in school choir, then a little bit in swing choir, and a little bit in uh, just regular uh, show choir. Then if you count also musicals and then church choir, and you basically added up to 14 years. I only stopped being serious about choir right as I was uh, graduating high school, basically. Oh, that's a shame. Why didn't you pursue it even further? Well, um, well, basically it was like after, okay, so like you have 
the full uh, 12 years, basically. Two years after that, I was still in church choir uh, for the local churches that I was at living when I was going to college. But uh, it just sort of just fell out over a while. And I'm just like, eh, I mean, I can still I can still sing, but I, I always need like a, a guide or something. It, it's still something in my repertoire, but uh, it, it was definitely a big part of my life. And um, unfortunately, being a baritone, I can't exactly sing me- the melody to a lot of different things. I'm great for harmonizing, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, but you're the guy who... Well, basically, you're the peanut butter to the jam, or you're the basis to the rock band and whatnot. It, it, you just... Yeah. yeah. And you're the Big Mac. Yeah, I remember that. Big Mac has a baritone voice. I thought he was bass. Really? I don't know. I, I, I'm not good at music. Like the lowest one. I don't know. I'll be quiet now. You gotta find the music in you. <laughs> Alrighty then. So that's question one for Wills. Now, the next one is for Lurk. Hey! And it comes from CRC Brony. Thank you, man. Uh, dear Lurk Cat, at first I sent an email with, okay, this one is, um, time sensitive, but okay, whatever it is. Um, question number one is, when was your first appearance in the MBS show? It was like 100 and something. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I just remember it was like about last year, about a year ago, roughly, I now. I think so too. Like, um, when he asked that question, I need to double check it because you've been here for a while now. Well, my first appearance was last year and then it was a few weeks ago I came back because it had been 10 months apart that I'd been on. And the only reason I was on was because, like, hey, you should be on Norman's show. You were on Midnight Scribes. You'll be fun. I was like, okay, I'll go annoy more people. Ugh, that was me. Yeah, and that was on episode 172. Lurker Cat is lurking. <laughs> yes. Lurker Cat is always lurking. Yes, indeed. And, wow, this this was a really old episode. Much fun. All of the lols. Puffy was there as well, not saying anything, but speaking through... The Kyle McCall. Really, was he? Yeah, she was. She was on, but she didn't have a mic. What? And Kyle was on with us. So Kyle was reading oh, out Puffy's yeah. uh, answers and stuff. And that was a right good laugh. I think Ro was on with us as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're doing it this all by fun. memory, right? Yeah. I remember that. I just don't remember numbers. I'm rubbish with numbers. <laughs> all right, then. Because um, I'm just looking at the recording here. And that was on June 27th of 2015. And June. We're in June, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course it was June 27th, because that was Pirate Night. How could I forget that? Yo, ho, ho. And a bottle of rum. Indeed. That question Not was... Well on duty. <laughs> True that. <laughs> that question was a bit too fast. Um, here's another one for you. Hence the name Lurker Cat. Do you have any pet cats? Yes, I have a pet cat called Jess, who is my hairy baby and is with me right now and always is with me when I'm recording MBS because she likes to be in Romy's face. Yes. Yes. And then I can hear the mic too. Alrighty then. So I'm going to save the rest for later because we have been running really, really long. Really, really, really long. (laughs) Yes, indeedy. We're running so long, we need to get new shoes. Speaking of which, I do need new shoes. (laughs) Yeah, by the time we're running, we can already hatch two eggs. Yeah, if I actually was running. Eh. <laughs> actually, actually, here's a here's a tip for all you Pokemon Go fans. The thing is, if you notice, if you try driving around in your car or riding in a car when you do Pokemon Go, you'll notice it doesn't count your t- your distance covered. That's because the GPS has a speed limit on it. However, yep. <laughs> there is an actual way for you to cheap this GPS to get more distance out of your eggs. And I'll Listen. and guess what the answer is. It's exactly like you would do in a Pokemon game. You get on a bicycle. By yep. riding on a bicycle, you actually are going underneath the speed limit, which seems to be about 15 miles an hour for the GPS as a speed clock. Yep. If you're going under 15 miles an hour, you will actually be able to go the furthest distance with the least amount of effort and, while at the same time, being able to hatch your eggs. That's what I do. I just go 10K on a bike up and down the road. And bada boom, there's a hatched egg, and it only took me about ten minutes. Oh god, that's that's life yeah. hack there. Yay! It's not life hack. It's just biking. It's quicker than yeah. quicker than walking. They were smart. They got nerds to exercise. It's like, how dare you? 
You made exercising seem really appealing to me. <laughs> well played, Pokemon. Well played. Uh, I, I should just, just think about that. The American government has spent millions upon billions of dollars investing in programs and advertisement and uh, e- education and ways to get kids to out get out and exercise and be fit and active. Along comes Pokemon Go. <laughs> Stop with their fingers. Uh, that, that reminds me of this post I saw on the Facebooks. It's like Pokemon, like you can interact with your friends. Like the start of Pokemon to go, like they tell people, oh, you can hook up with friends and cable link. Oh, that doesn't work, right? Okay, what's next? Oh, yes, the pre- the Pokemon pedometer. You can walk around. No, that doesn't work. Okay, uh, we need you to get out. So Pokemon Go, go out, kids, go. <laughs> Get outside now! Is pretty much it. Since 1995. <laughs> Go outside! Yes. Um, P.S. from CRC. Did Norman let you out of his dungeon yet, Lurker? The answer is no. Yeah, the, the fun dungeon is he called it. I call it fun dungeon. It's much more fun. <laughs> so, yeah. But still, uh, thanks for the emails. And if you would like to ask us questions or anything else, you could ask them at com. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebishowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. If you have been following me, I have been doing a lot of talking about stuff. Usually through Instagram, but still, it's still there. And Wills, where can the people find you? They can find me in the furthest cliffs of the old knee, where the greatest of warriors shall come. No, okay, that's not going to work. It's uh, all closed down. No, if you guys want to find me, you can find me in Will as in on DeviantArt and Will as in on Fim Fiction, and you can find me at Will as in on uh, Tumblr. You can also find me at Will as in on Yahoo. You can also find me at Will as in on League of Legends. Uh-huh. Will as in on. Will is in in uh, Battle.net. Will is in in everywhere. Will is in there. Will is in here. (laughs) Uh, Will is in everywhere. uh, All the Will is in time. (laughs) Same Will is in channel. All right. Then Lurk, what about you? Uh, I'm just lurkercat.deviantart.com or I am facebook.com forward slash Highland Bronies. All right. That's it. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. And you can also catch us on PonyvaLife.com. Also, we have the review and discussion show on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Please subscribe to that because the show or that show needs the love too. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will Eisen. And I'm your favorite cat, Looker Cat. And we'll guys catch you next week. Or, well, if Pokemon Go is around, probably we'll be distracted by that. But still, we'll do a show even if we're walking around town catching Pokemons. And please do be safe. Because I've heard stories, bad, bad stories. Please be safe. Be don't aware of your surroundings all the don't time. Don't catch Pokemon and drive. Oh, yo. no, definitely don't do that. <laughs> oh, I heard a smart one where some Uber driver uh, promoted his thing to Pokemon Go people saying that, hey, I'll drive you around for half an hour or an hour to catch Pokemon. <laughs> Dang, that guy's actually smart. He's gaining money. I know. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Take care, people.